Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is atom bombing. Recently, a security researcher at Ensilo released a new uh, code injection technique that works against all versions of Windows. Before I jump in, if you haven't heard of code injection, this is one way uh, attackers that already have access to your system use to gain kind of elevated privilege and to hide on your system. Essentially, the goal for the attacker is to inject his malicious code into some sort of legitimate process. And there's many reasons he might want to do this. First of all, security software may whitelist the legitimate process, meaning if his evil code hides there, it can hide forever. And they also might whitelist that legitimate process on a network level. So it might allow you to avoid host-based firewalls. Finally, sometimes certain legitimate processes running in Windows have elevated access to data. So by injecting some other process, they might be able to gain access to say your browser's secure data or other things like that. Anyways, that's the code injection I'm talking about. And over the years, researchers and attackers have found different ways to inject malicious code into legitimate processes. And atom bombing is one such new technique. So the researcher at Ensilo found a new technique that involves something called Windows atom tables. And unless you're a coder, you may not have heard of atom tables, but at a very high level, atom tables are this place where Windows applications can store data. Furthermore, different applications can access data from these uh, atom tables. And I won't go into the technical discussion of this issue, but if you are a super security nerd and a developer, you might want to check out the technical blog post associated with this atom bombing technique. Anyways, these researchers found this new technique which allows an attacker that already has the ability to execute code on your computer, he can actually leverage these atom tables to inject his malicious code into a legitimate process and have that process run it. And again, this could have a lot of repercussions. It's one way a bad guy can hide his evil code in a legitimate process. He might be able to evade things like antivirus and other products that are actually looking for this sort of code injection as another sign of bad behavior. Now, there is one caveat. Even though you might see a lot of headlines saying this atom bombing can bypass security controls, you got to realize the attacker already needs to be on your system. They already have to have access to your system system to use this code injection. And there's really only two ways to do that. Either they already have a malicious program that's run on your system that's doing this code injection. And by the way, that malicious file that's on your system, this code injection technique does not prevent or bypass your AV from scanning that file to see if it's bad. So if your antivirus solution can already find this bad file, it's going to block it before it's even able to do this code injection. Now the other technique that might be possible is some sort of fileless malware attack. There are cases where some bad guy might leverage a software vulnerability on your system to actually directly execute code in memory. And smart attackers, when they do this and have control of your system through this direct memory exploit, sometimes they might download a file to persist on your system, but by doing that, they're dropping a file. New attacks are file lists. That means they never want to drop a file on your system. Rather, they'll leverage their ability to execute code directly to kind of load themselves only into memory. And in that case, this sort of code injection technique may be another way for them to kind of gain some sort of temporary access to your system and hide without actually dropping a file. Anyways, long story short, atom bombing is kind of a very interesting and significant technique. It is something that security programs, including antivirus, needs to start to look for. That said, don't think it prevents antivirus from catching malware in files. By the way, there's really nothing you can do about this. This isn't something Windows can fix. It's a core part of their operating system. However, I would expect endpoint security products, things like antivirus and maybe next generation AV products to start to include technologies to kind of detect this particular atom bombing technique. Anyways, interesting story. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.